Hey, good day, everybody. Dave Walker here. And to kick off our Forward 23 virtual event here uh, at the B2SMB Institute, we're going to do something that we've done uh, in past Forward events, which is to invite three of our uh, most seasoned and, frankly, most articulate uh, uh, readers of the small business market space and ecosystem and ask them some really kind of three fundamental questions. What do you see going on right now? Uh, what do you think is really important that's going on right now? And what do you see coming in the future? And we're going to kind of go around the table and probably, you know, go off track at least a couple of times if I have anything to do about it. Um, and uh, we'll hopefully get for all of you a, a clear picture from these subject matter experts on really what's going on in your customer base. So without further ado, first, Anita Campbell from Small Business Trends. Welcome, Anita. Hi, everyone. Great to be here and, and always enjoy getting together with this crew and you, Dave. Thanks. Uh, second, uh, our, the Chief Product Officer for A. Weber, uh, Chris Vasquez. Chris, welcome. It's great to be here, too. Ditto to everything Anita just said. <laughs> And then last but not least, Scott Norwalk, who runs business.com uh, within Centerfield and uh, is, uh, again, one of the one of the smarter guys I know in this in this space. Welcome, Scott. You must not know that many people in this space. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. And for humble, that. too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Spoken with humility, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, so. exactly. Everyone treat. Well, very happy to be here. Thanks so much. So Anita, let's start with you on that kind of first open-ended question. What are you seeing right now amongst your many, many thousands of subscribers and followers and readers? What's going on in the small business space? Well, in one sense, it's business as usual, as it always is. Um, you know, business owners focused on their own businesses. But I think this whole banking crisis that we're in the midst of at the moment caught a lot of business owners by surprise. Take, for example, Etsy sellers who ended up getting kind of hit by this in an indirect way when their funds were frozen. And we've heard this story from other communities and marketplaces, and they were very worried for a short period of time. Luckily, it all has pretty much, I think, resolved itself as far as people getting their money. But I think it's brought a lot of attention to this whole thing about, gee, where do I have my business funds? And do I have enough FDIC insurance? And oh, maybe I better look at my retirement funds. You know, if I've got an SEP or a simple or a 401k or IRA, you know, where are those funds? Are they protected? And and that's a very surprising thing. We've been so used to not having to even think about those things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Chris, from and it's a great call out. It's certainly top of mind. I, I don't know. I, I I have the kind of the news feed down the bottom corner of my screen, just kind of watching it, waiting for, okay, what's coming? Come on now. Let's get this resolved. Chris, how about you from your perspective? What are you seeing out there right now? Um, I'm not just going to repeat exactly what Anita said. So let me talk about something a little different, although I agree with that being like in the zeitgeist right now is like, mm -hmm. oh, my goodness. Am I going to get be able to get my money when I need my money? That's a, a big thing out there. But um, I'm going to I'm an optimistic guy. I'm going to uh, call out something else that we're we're seeing. Aweber serves um, small businesses and we're a SaaS platform where you can sign up and do it yourself. So uh, sometimes what we'll see during times of economic uncertainty is we'll see an increase in business um, as mm -hmm. people um, might be laid off or being concerned about being laid off. They start thinking about um, creating a business of their own where they have at least uh, more of a sense of control. And I think what we're going to see coming out of like these large layoffs at tech companies where um, you know highly skilled technical people are losing their jobs at companies that in some some cases have not ever had layoffs in the history of their business. Um, I think we're gonna enter a, a period of really interesting small business creation, even though right now it might sound, or it might feel really uh, disrupted because not only are there issues with banking, um, interest rates are super high, inflation, although it's been uh, 
cooling continues to be over 6%. Um, and uh, and add to that, AI is entering the marketplace. And folks are, I, I talk to a lot of young designers, my background's in design. And these young designers in school are like, oh my goodness, am I going to enter a world where my job doesn't exist? Um, so there's all this uncertainty. But I think all of those things um, really lead to opportunity. Um, obviously, like folks losing a job they may have depended on or fearing losing a job and going out and creating a business of their own. Who knows what innovation is going to come from that? Same thing with AI. Um, it's scary right now, but I, I'm, as an optimist, I think it's going to end up creating more jobs than it destroys. Um, great observation. And, and let's put a pin in that whole, the, the figure I've heard is since the pandemic started, we've added 10 million new small businesses. And I think the the loss was around four and a half to five million. I'd love to come circle back on that with all of you and just talk about this as we look forward to what's coming. What is coming when it comes to these new um, these new entrepreneurs that that have been um, created? Hmm. So Scott, you sit astride how many hundreds of thousands of transactions every month that go through business.com? Well, yeah, I mean, within center field, uh, it's I think over one hundred and fifty thousand uh, right. You know, between between everything, but that's also re residential and and business services uh, as well. Uh, I think from from our point of view, and we're an interesting place because we're publishing so much content um, around you know seventy different categories of products and services that small businesses and enterprises are looking for as you know um, services, tools, tips that that they need to run their business, and we're seeing spikes in in volume of uh, the the amount of people who are coming to our website looking to find uh, either replacements or new tools and, and tips and services uh, to help their business. We're seeing um, engagement in our newsletter products off the charts. You know, our our uh, open rates uh, have, have gone up, you know, 20, 25% to, you know, almost 50% of the people who receive our our newsletter every week or twice a week are opening it and that that is better than than ever or, or bigger than ever mm -hmm. um and also a huge spike in the amount of people who are coming to and i think this builds on what chris said uh pages that we've uh written or articles that we've written about how to start a business where to get incorporated uh, mm -hmm. what are the best businesses to start where uh, uh the majority of our traffic used to come to strictly what is the best product for accounting software? Uh, now, th those broader terms uh, or the broader interest uh, articles are getting the spikes in in traffic uh, more more than ever before. Um, now, are you are you seeing any so acceleration in information? Which is, is I've heard that story a lot. Anita, I don't know if you would agree that you've seen also kind of a an acceleration of that that kind of information of starting a business. But are you seeing any slowdown in the rate of um, uh, proposals that small businesses ask for you to represent to your vendor community? Um, we're we're seeing probably a small slowdown in the demand for um, larger ticket item products, mm -hmm. uh, but a but a increase in the smaller ticket item products that help them run their business day to day. Got right? it. That, that's also a, a shift from our business where industrials were a big part of our business in, in previous years mm -hmm. um, uh, to uh, you know more software uh, based services that, that people are looking for. Um, also uh, a uh, uh, being okay with used in the industrials where everybody always wanted the new forklift, the, the, mm -hmm. the new skid steer loader, the new Caterpillar product. And that was the majority of the demand. Now we're seeing that, okay, I'm okay if it's used. <laughs> right? like, okay. Yeah. That's very interesting. Is yeah. that recent? Uh, sorry uh, to just jump in. Yeah, like... That's that's all. Um, it, it's, it's recent on both sides, right? Where the sellers 
weren't interested in people looking for used and the demand wasn't as big in used. Now those sellers are like, yep, we can get the used products. Probably a lot of businesses went out or, or, or people changed what they were you know, willing to do already upgraded. Um, and you know, uh, Anita, maybe we can talk about some of the grants and, and, and money possible. So maybe, maybe people already invested in that in, in getting new products. So they traded in some mm. of those products. So there's inventory there, uh, that sellers are willing to sell where in the past sellers did not want to be mapped with people who are looking for used. Now they, they are willing to do that. Sorry. I, that that is interesting. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure I would peg that as being, you know, yeah, but this is one of the things we're, we're observing is people are buying used, um, yeah. but makes a large degree of sense. I mean, I think that, uh, again, something I've heard over and again is, is those small businesses that survived the pandemic are extraordinarily pragmatic now. And they are very much, hey, I'm not going to spend more than I need to. I'm going to save more than I think I need. I'm going to you know, really be careful with all of my hires. I mean, they're just, they're, they're not, they're not rushing into anything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and I think that's, that's a, their important lesson that they learned from uh, getting kind of smacked by the, by the pandemic. So Anita, back to you um, in the, in the, you, you certainly identified something in the banking crisis that's important, but are there other things that you're seeing in conversations with small businesses that they are really elevating is, yeah, this is more important than it's ever been, or this is a whole new thing that's very, very important to my business. You know, the whole staffing issue is still out there. I mean, um, you know, the bigger companies are looking at layoffs, but when you talk with small business owners, they're still having trouble finding enough staff, you know, um, qualified staff. And we've seen a lot of businesses that literally have had to cut back their hours because they just don't have the people. When you look at, you know, uh, restaurants and, and other businesses that serve the public like that, just having a tough time getting good help. And so while on the one hand, you know, with the tech layoffs and other big company layoffs, my hope is that some of that will, you know, end up in some people being more available to the small businesses that maybe they want to join a smaller business where there's more of a family feel and they have a closer connection and that that will help alleviate some of that issue. Because that's like one of the top things that we're seeing that's like a ceiling on mm -hmm. the ability of some of these businesses to grow is just not having the staff. So we've seen interesting things like restaurants that are, <laughs> they're, um, you know, they're investing a lot more in tech, uh, for example, um, you know, ordering systems and, and that sort of thing. But we've even seen them, you know, bringing in like little automated robots and things like that, you know, mm -hmm. in a small business. I mean, mm -hmm. can you believe that, you know, but it's happening. And they're probably just thinking in terms of hours saved for somebody on staff to run around. And I've noticed, at least in the last uh, six months, I'd say, virtually every restaurant that Kate and I go to has now credit card pay at the table. Um, you know, they leave an electronic yeah. bill. It's basically there with a the reader. You shove in your credit card and you're done. And and I think that that the time savings of that just in the back and forth is probably adds up. You know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it probably adds up yeah. tremendously. So, Chris, from your perspective, what do you think is important right now? Well, just one aside really quickly. I w went out to dinner in uh, Philadelphia the other night and a robot was the runner. It brought the food to the table. I had never experienced that before. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, and I, I would not be surprised if that was a reaction to folks trying to figure out a solution to staffing problems. Um, uh, yeah, so... Uh, uh, I'm going to take the uh, optimist side of what I'm seeing out there that looks really neat um, is I'm seeing that in our customer base, folks are really interested in partnering with other small businesses that are complementary. I mean, I, when I was young and starting my first business, I was part of this group called TIP, I think it was called, where, um, you know, you get together, it's a networking group, you got to refer a certain amount of people to other businesses. And um, we're seeing these... Um, communities of people popping up to grow together. Um, we're seeing a lot of this in like the content space where people will do content swaps. If you have a blog, you know, someone else who has a complimentary blog, you, you share um, 
content with each other as a way to kind of cross promote to each other's audiences, but it's not just limited to um, bloggers and content creators. It's kind of like they set the um, groundwork and now other small business industries, whether they're restaurants or my fiance is an interior designer and this happens in her community, you know, you find complimentary folks who are either craftspeople, if you're an interior designer, or, um, you know, some entertainment option if you're um, a restaurant and you cross promote each other's products. And technology is one of the things that makes that a whole heck of a lot easier uh, for folks be to be able to A, connect with each other, and then B, cross promote. And the really neat thing is we're actually seeing people grow significantly from this from cross-promoting. Uh, one of the ways we look at growth is by uh, newsletter subscribers. And these folks who are partnering are growing at just astronomical rates. Um, mm -hmm. So I think like this sort of community approach to business growth uh, is a, a really interesting thing that tech enables and in uncertain times can not only help you grow, but also help you feel supported, uh, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's the, it's the social media Izing of you know the the small business community right yeah you, you want to create these instagramable things right or, or or moments and you need people to do that i i see that a lot in um like boutique uh hotel or or ownerships right where you know they're they're trying to get people in so they have to partner with their community i have a, a great friend in philadelphia who, who owns um, the Deacon. It's a, you know, like a seven room hotel. And every night of the week, he's having some other restaurant or event type partner come in and run an event at his boutique hotel, because you have to get all of these things going. And then that's how it, it spreads virally. Right. So you have that's awesome. on both sides. Yeah. I got to check it out. You do, yeah. They have, they, have, they, have, they have amazing events. A romantic weekend getaway. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. You know, it, it's also reflective of what I've heard from Eric Gross at Alignable that, you know, the the chatter in their 9 million plus small business member network is really exactly as you described, Chris, it's about, hey, is there anybody out there with a uh, dog grooming business that would be willing to test my new dog shampoo or mm -hmm. dog grooming system? And And there's that's just one illustration of just just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of conversations going on where people are really trying to amplify their own success by doing it with somebody else. And it makes all the sense in the world. And frankly, no one is better decision. No one is better positioned than a decision maker within a small business, right? Um, the lumbering giants of, you know, Dell and Intuit, it's a lot harder to do a partnership of any kind, yeah. even though you're serving the same customer. But down at that small business level, they can really do some terrific, some terrific stuff. Um, Scott, what about you? What do you think is 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 important right now that's kind of out and in our face? Well, I'm going to go back to to Anita's point um, about hiring. I, I think small business owners, who if you go back the last 20 years, have said, "Okay, I'm I'm the owner. I'm the run. I, I run this business." I own this business. I'm going to bring in young people, kind of bring them up in my way, uh, are now more willing to take an experienced, maybe more expensive person and bring them in to help move the business forward. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think a lot of businesses are seeing that their ceilings, if they don't bring in intelligence or, or, or you know, know-how, maybe from other industries in. And mm -hmm. I think that's a, a, a really good, you know, kind of effect of, mm -hmm. of maybe, you know, if we're looking at the, the optimist side or the bright side of some layoffs, there might be people who you can bring from corporate America into your small business to help propel you forward. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe you have to pay a little bit more uh, in the short term, but in the long term, your business will grow uh, because of it. So what, do, so what do you guys see as, as uh, kind of, as we kind of wrap, wrap this up or, or get to the next phase of these three questions that we've asked, what do you see as the role of um, our audience members, leaders in the business to small business space, do you think they have a role in helping small businesses figure out staffing, how to hire talent, when to hire talent, where to hit? Do they do, do they do they serve that up as initiatives? I mean, certainly everybody scrambled when COVID began in creating content and and a lot of it very good content on how to build a website or how to launch e-commerce or those kind of things. But we it feels like we're 
boy, if you haven't learned how to do e-commerce yet as a small business, unless you're brand new, you've you've really been asleep for the last yeah. three years. How do you see um, us in this business, small business community start to address, let's take the people issue uh, or challenge first. So Anita, how do you see it? So I would see doing that um, indirectly. And I want to call out a company. I, I don't even know, to be honest, I should know this, but I don't. I don't know if they're part of the, the Institute or not. But one of the things is Amazon and what they have done. Now, you know, companies, large companies for years have always had initiatives to support small businesses, you know, and they could be as simple as contests or, you know, something much greater. But one of the things we've seen is this brought to a higher level now. If you go on the Amazon website and you notice on so many listings now, this is a small business, for example, you know, and, and it's like support this small business, referring to the seller. And I think that large companies have a very strong platform where they can do that. They don't have to be a marketplace, an e-commerce seller like Amazon to do that, but there are ways that they can pull in these small businesses. And here's how it relates to staffing. You know, it relates to staffing in an indirect way, because if you grow the small business itself, they can afford to spend more, they can afford to compete more. You know, as Scott was saying about those, those corporate people, people who have left the corporate world, they can afford to hire them and provide things to to those employees if they've got more business. So if you feed the business of the small business, it helps solve a lot of other things downstream, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I don't know, would you guys agree with that? Yeah, um, I definitely would. Um, I Because I kind of, I was thinking about that question when we were, um, or when you were just talking, when Dave was talking earlier. And when it comes specifically to staffing, I think it really depends on the business if you can help directly there. I think like whoever we're a communications a marketing communications platform and we can share what we're learning about what what works for us in hiring and I think there's value there because we hire at a larger scale than small businesses do so we can experiment more. But our real contribution I think comes in exactly what you're saying like how do we help these folks earn more and earn more predictable income so they can grow their business. Um and how uh, the other side of that too is how do we make it as easy as possible for them to onboard team members into their processes using our platforms? Because um, I think like that is is a potentially a, a pretty large area of wasted time and low efficiency when you make it difficult for business owners to onboard. Uh, people into the platforms they use. Sometimes it just means it takes a long time to get them up and running, but sometimes it means they never onboarding this, onboard the staff member and they keep doing it because they figure like, oh, I'm the only person who knows how to do this. And that's real waste at the end of the day. So I think all of us who are building software platforms can pay real attention to what onboarding looks like so business owners can get themselves out of the things that they don't need to be doing and can let their teams do it. Um, so it's, I, I'm kind of agreeing, like we can all definitely indirectly impact staffing. Right. Scott, you, you, you guys um, foster a lot of reviews in, in the products and services that get sold on your platform. Um, and I, I'm curious as to whether or not those reviews are kind of turning into mini communities and groups that are kind of focused around certain purchases or certain hmm. challenges that are being faced is, is that appearing yet are the small businesses taking that process of reviews and kind of turning it into oh there's somebody just like me who's who's got the similar challenge no i mean maybe we don't we just don't know how to track that but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we, it, maybe it's a great idea um but we're, we're not really tracking the the you know the second push of of our review and and, and seeing where it goes i think um to answer the, the, the question that you posed, we do feel very strongly that it is our responsibility as publishers and editorially driven you know, creators of content um, to inform small business owners uh, and help them with their mm -hmm. challenges today. So I think mm -hmm. what, what we've decided internally is that our voice has to change as the, the small business owners needs change, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe the products that we're reviewing 
uh, maybe the content that we're driving, right? Our, our creation of a, of a newsletter and having that be a, uh, a standalone product that does not link back to any of our owned and operated sites and have that be its own content and speak in its own voice was was made out of what's going on today. You know, we didn't launch that that long ago. Um, mm -hmm. And we have two sends, one's be better and one's be building. And so we, we have... Uh, identified that the small business owner not wants to not only build their business and grow their business, but they want to do it in a better way. They, they want right. to be better uh, uh, citizens of the small business community. And how, how do we help them do that? And I think the, the, the uptake of that content has, has proven that, you know, that's what people want, that that is what, what they want. And, and they are subscribing and they are sharing and, and, and that subscriber grace is is growing. And, and I think that, that, um, you know, use, you use the, the newly invented term social mediaization <laughs> of, of small business. Trade I think that, Trade <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get on the, get on the phone with the, with the patent <laughs> office. Um, that, that the, the, the partnerships that kind of everybody is referred to that seem to be in the, in what small business are thinking about is flocking together and creating mm -hmm. kind of shared resources, shared capabilities, even shared mailing lists, you know, something as simple as that, um, that, that that's a real op opportunity for all of us kind of who, who in our hundreds of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of small business customers, you know, take a, a, a page out of the Alignable book and start connecting them and start actually fostering kind of Hey, you know, we have, and, and Chris, remind me, you have something like this, don't you, where you guys have started to, you know, um, give the opportunity to large kind of categories of business to really kind of group together around your product and how it's used? Yeah, it's, and that's really important for us. Um, and we do it in a variety of different ways that started during the pandemic, but has grown into um, just a variety of different communication mediums uh, with different people based on their industry and also based on their goals. So that those are the two ways we look at it. Like industry is pretty easy to understand. Um, on the goal side, we try and connect people who um, are looking to grow an audience around their content is one community versus others who are looking to sell e-commerce products versus others who are looking to sell in-person uh, products or services. Um, and there's some crossover between them, but uh, we found, honestly, that the best advocate you can get is somebody who's done it before. And in many cases, that isn't a Weber uh, who's done the thing before that uh, local plumber has done. But what we can do is connect them with someone in our audience who has done it. Um, mm -hmm. And those like kind of ad hoc mentorship programs that emerge are really an amazing thing to watch. Um, mm -hmm. Well, one thing I think that's going to be interesting to come out of or in the future that, that's coming out of this time is the small business owner's willingness to share their information, to, mm. to receive a product or, or, or receive um, uh, other information on something that can help their business. So there's a lot of companies out there that are selling something today or providing a service today that is not going to be the service that they provide a year or two or three from now. The amount of data that they're collecting by providing that service will determine what they are going to provide mm -hmm. uh, in, in the future. And I think that's going to be really exciting to see because the amount of information that's being passed and, and, and transacted today is, is bigger than ever before. Do you have a certain uh, product or company in mind that brings one to mind immediately for me? Well, I think, curious. I think, I don't, I don't know if it's a taboo subject because it's, it's, it's kind of has both sides, but, but the, the ERC loans mm. um, that there's so, highly marketed today uh uh tv radio i mean i listen to sports talk radio if you listen, calls like great <laughs> if you listen to wfan in the morning every break is is you could get this amount of money and that that has a it, it's a service if you go with the right company you will you will be able possibly to get something that's good for your business i'm gonna say i'm not i'm not endorsing it ha, ha, however that is a product that ends in 23 months. Sure. So, so all of the data that these companies are collecting, the ones that are doing it best are collecting a lot. 
is going to uh, uncover some brand new product 20, 23 months from now that will be something that we haven't seen before. That's a great example. I'm, my mind goes to OpenAI with their uh, with ChatGPT, which they've yep. they have their twenty dollars paid product, but the real value in there is what they're going to discover it's able to do over the next yeah. Um, like this, this period right now is a huge market research period for them. Um, no doubt, no doubt. Anita, um, again, playing off of, uh, I think our, my favorite discovery today, social mediaization of small business. Um, do you see that, frankly, the, the, the rapid re evolution of social media and our use of it at all kind of age groups has, has really, um, uh, help small business let down their you know very guarded stance on private information we're not going to share this with anybody and you know this is our secret sauce is it becoming because they're they're, they're certainly willing in their personal lives to share just about anything are they in their businesses are they really kind of opening their eyes to the fact that no you know i can i can do more with a network with you know sharing of ideas sharing of talent sharing of resources Yes, I think there's some of that going on. And I think they're just, you know, figuring out that if you want to get staff, for example, you have to share more. You know, uh, I'm really excited by the small businesses that know how to use Facebook, for example, to get staff, because that's where a lot of people are. They're, they're people. And if it's not someone that they would hire, it's the spouse of someone they would hire who's on Facebook and sees that such and such a company has job openings or is doing participating in a job fair or whatever it is. And so you have to be willing to go out and talk about these things. You know, before a lot of small businesses played things close to the vest. They didn't want to reveal a lot of things because they didn't necessarily want their competitors to know. And now it's like, hey, I don't have any choice. I got to get people in here somehow. I've got to, you know, I've got to reach out and get more customers. And so there is this opening up in that sense. I do think though that, you know, you still have people concerned about privacy, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, getting more customers getting staff, those things really matter. And they've learned, hey, this is the way to do it. You know, you yeah. got to get out there. Yeah. So final thoughts from, from each of you. Uh, I'd, I'd like you to each be a, a bit prescriptive to members of our audience who are your peers and say to them, hey, look, I, I know you're in the midst of, you know, an evolving plan for 2023 that is having to react to market conditions don't don't get too buried in the in the in the short term take the long view on this fill in the blank what would that be anita well you know i, I would say to work these small business customers that you have into your business and use the platforms that you have, such as your website, to do that. I gave the example earlier of highlighting when, you know, it might be a small business seller, um, but there are other ways, whether it's whatever you might be doing. You know, if you sell a product, can you highlight small businesses in your area who can install that product? You know, can you work that more deeply into your website, into your newsletter communications. You don't have to go to the extent of setting up a community and everything else. I know that's a big commitment and a lot of companies shy away from wanting to do that, but just work these things in somehow into your communications, highlight them. And I think that that would go a long way, you know, really, really helping integrate yourself with your small business customers to help them in turn get more customers. Just put your mind to it. Get, do a brainstorming session internally. You'll figure out a couple of ways. I think that's great advice. Scott, how about yourself? I would say uh, be aggressive and, and, and you know, use, use the, the fear that might be out there to your advantage and, and, and go for it. Okay. I, I, I like I like that. I think that, that um, what I've heard say more than a few times is be presumptuous, you know, be presume that basically that the small business is facing this challenge, not shrink away from addressing it with them, but find a polite and professional way to say you're likely struggling with 
you know, fill in the blank. L let me help you. I have some great ideas on that. Um, so Chris, for you. Uh, mine is product perspective. I can't take that hat off. But first, Anita, that you're speaking my language. Like if the more you're talking about customers, the better. You cannot integrate your customers' experience and words into your messaging too much, in my opinion. But uh, what I'd say is, from the product point of view, focus on your core competency. Like we are not in the last 10 years. We're in the next 10 years right now. And interest rates are high, money is expensive. And it's going to be most like, this is my anti-optimist, my pessimist side. <laughs> it's it's going to be a little bit tighter for uh, a little while, but that's not necessarily bad, especially if it helps us focus on the thing we do really well or the things we do really well. And I just wanted to share, I read this wild, I thought it was wild, uh, incredibly frank note from Mark Zuckerberg to Facebook, I think it was last week, where he was talking about a number of things, including their um, uh, additional layoffs that are coming out. But he said something that was really interesting to me. And uh, it was, we do leading work across a wide range of advanced technologies and then distill that into inspiring products that improve people's lives. We do this with AI, AI to help you creatively express yourself and discover new content, with the metaverse to deliver a realistic sense of presence, and with new media formats to create rich experience with encryption to let uh, your community privately, like you communicate privately in more ways and with business tools to help reach customers. Um, so what he was stating there is Meta has sprawled over the past couple of years. They built a newsletter product, which couldn't compete with things like Aweber, sorry. Um, but they uh, they built a lot of stuff, podcast player, all sorts of things. And what he's saying is like, for the time being, that time is over. And we're going to focus on these other or this area where we know we provide value. This is how we came up. This is how we change people's lives. What he is not saying, though, and here's where I agree with Scott, he's not saying like, we're not going to experiment. We're not going to push. What he's saying is we're going to push in these areas. And I think that would be my advice to um, to companies that serve small businesses now is keep experimenting, keep pushing the limits, but do it in the way where you know that you serve uh, small businesses, because uh, that's where I think you'll have the most impact on your customers' lives and you'll be able to weather any economic storms that they come. Terrific, guys. Thank you. Uh, again, so much for sharing your 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 wisdom, your perspectives, your points of view. Um, I know I know this particular session is always very popular and, and with our audience because it really does distill down from from your three unique vantage points what to look forward to. You know what's going on and what to look forward to. So I hope to do this again sometime soon, sometime more frequently. I would last little suggestion for for really for all of us um, is. How do we take some of these perspectives, not necessarily in the form of surveys or research, nothing that formal, but how do we aggregate this into something that can be served up to our network of executives just like you, your peers, to say, hey, you know, th this, this is kind of our roundtable discussion on this particular topic, like helping small businesses with people or helping small businesses with adoption of technology, new new capabilities. Um, here's what we're seeing in our networks and communities. So I'll put some thought into that. The team will put some thought into that and we may come back to you and try and figure out a way that we can do that, that kind of thing more than once a year, <laughs> which is our current schedule of doing that. So appreciate all of you. Anita, always good to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. And Chris, as always, a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. That was a blast. Thank you for inviting me. And Scott, always good to see you as well, my friend. And Thank look forward so to seeing hopefully most, if not all of you in, uh, in Napa in May. So thanks, everybody. Take care. Take care.